Now, uh, today we have reached the, in the series of the strength of material class, we have reached the, the fifth class today. Today is the fifth class and we are discussing about uh, the stress, simple stress and strains. Now, I will, I, I will go, I will go back uh, around 5 or 10, 12 slides, the previous things, whatever discussed so far. Now, the further I will continue uh, with the next course, next uh, topic. Till then, uh, whatever the things we have discussed in the last two, four hours, uh, I will summarize uh, with few slides. And uh, um, in the strength of materials, this is the one the uh, definition or the character of the material. The material that is stress. Stress is the force developing the material against the applied force. One should understand this. Now, stress will be calculated based on the load applied, load applied, and the area of cross section. Uh, if you go through the previous slides, uh, previous classes, definitely it is possible. We can I have elaborated a little more about this in, in the previous classes. Now, I am just highlighting this. Now, this is one is uh, in the stress, there are two kinds, uh, three kinds. One is direct stresses, that is tensile stress, tensile stress again, developed against the tensile forces, and the compressive uh, stresses are developed against the compressive force. And the shearing stress, uh, shear, shear stress, and in the no, this is, uh, these are the fundamentals in strength of materials. No, the strength of materials will not survive. Uh, or it will not represent the strength of materials unless having these things: uh, stress, strain, Hinks modulus, and also the shear force, shear stress. Uh, shear stress will be defined as shear force uh, divided by shearing area, sliding area, shearing area, and shear strain is displacement so by original length. And shear modulus is the shear stress upon shear strain. It can be calculated. No, it is good. And also we have discussed about the bars of varying cross section. Bars of varying. In the bars of varying cross section, now what is going to happen? What is you know how the behavior of the stress? No, the stress behavior. No, for example, see this is the bar for varying cross section, section one, section two, section three. Uh, maybe made out of same material, all the three made out of same material, are sometimes made out of different materials. Load applied, force applied, force applied, section 1, section 2, section 3. No. Length 1, length 2, length 3. The total change in the length, total change in the length of the bar due to the application of the force. Maybe tensile or maybe compressive. Total change in length of the bar is equal to delta A. Delta 1 is the change in length of the bar in the section 1. Delta 2 is the change in length of the bar delta 3. Delta 2 and similarly delta 3 change in length of the bar. Like you know, see any number of uh, cross, uh, varying cross sections, you know, definitely we can calculate. We know that in the original or uh, in the beginning start from the stress strain, simple stress and strain. Now we have calculated change in land is equal to Pm over E. Apply the C and we will get whatever we want. We can calculate the change in dimension in the change in dimension. We can calculate. Now similarly, the another important issue to be addressed, uh, we are addressed uh, in this uh, uh, previous class series. Now that is lateral strain and poisonous ratio. That is linear strain, change in length, largely from the application of the load, load application, where we have applied the force, load applied, and linear direction and lateral direction, lateral direction. The lateral dimension get reduced. And if you apply the compressive force, lateral force, lateral dimension the bulge. Now therefore. No, this is the uh, 
lateral lateral strain lateral strain change in lateral dimension change in lateral dimension for original dimension we can calculate the change in lateral dimension lateral uh, that is lateral strain from this we know how to calculate the linear strain and we know how to calculate the lateral strain so from this it is possible we can calculate the Poisonous ratio, poisonous ratio. It is a constant within the elastic limit. It is a poisonous. There are three constants we have discussed, including this. One is Jenks modulus, the other one is shear modulus, the other one is poisonous ratio. That is strain upon place. This is represented by one by m. Somebody will say one by m. Somebody will say mu. Somebody says in other different. Yeah. We can calculate the lateral, lateral strain. Can be calculated. Poisonous ratio multiplied by linear strain. It is possible. We can do it. Yes, sir. And similarly. Now this is uh, the same thing we have done it, and also now so volumetric strain. Volumetric strain change in volume by original volume. volume. That is delta V change, change in volume, and this is the original volume of the material. This is the change in volume. Change in volume is equal to this can be calculated. We have this minus sign. This is now minus is we have lateral dimension. Linear is either increased or decreased, and the lateral is Either decrease based on the if the la, uh, linear dimension is increased, lateral dimensions are decreased. Then therefore, opposite uh, in the reverse direction. So therefore, this means there is a derivation. Now it is not necessary to discuss much about this. You know, just understand. And also we have just discussed about the compound bars. So far we have discussed about the compound bar. Our composite section. Composite section is uh, made out of two or more materials. To our more number of load resisting elements, materials. For example, here in an elastic column, in an elastic column, in an elastic column consisting of steel, steel reinforcement and the concrete. So, no, the two material. There are two principles here. One should remember here. If you remember, if you know these two principles, now we can solve any kind of problems, any and any number of any, any, any uh, com com combination. Now in this, when you apply the force on the column, a composite column, the stress in steel, that is deformation in the column, that is changing length in the column, in the material, material that is one is steel and the concrete is same, deformation is same. Therefore, stress in steel and strain in steel is equal to strain in, because the deformation of the column is same. Therefore, strain in uh, steel and column, uh, steel and uh, concrete also same, and also the total load is taken by the total load is resisted by load taken by uh, the steel and the load taken by that load is equal to total total load. That is the total load is shared by both the materials. One is the concrete, the other is steel. Both the material, depending upon their capacity and their strength, both the material will carry the. And also the another example is a copper copper casing and a steel rod. Now here there are two materials, so that also the principle remains same because when you apply the when you apply the force, the change in length remains same in both the material. Now therefore strain in copper must it is equal to strain in uh, uh, steel. And also load uh, total load shared by uh, column and, uh, and uh, sorry, steel and copper will be. Total load taken by the total is shared by in both the materials. Now this is what this is what we have discussed about this. And also the other one is when the body is subjected to mutually three particular that is bulk modulus. Already we have discussed about this. Again I am coming back, refreshing. Now bulk modulus direct stress upon volumetric strain. Direct direct stress by volumetric strain. Even direct stress means the load applied in the three major direction in the perpendicular direction. And the strain that is change in volume of the bar, that is volumetric strain. The volumetric strain, the change in volume, or the original volume of the material. And this is another uh, another constant. There are four constants. Uh, one is end modulus, bulk modulus, Poisson's ratio, and also shear modulus, rigidity modulus. These are the four elastic constants which are being which are being used elaborately in our uh, analysis, stress analysis, the designs of uh, stru structures, load resistance structures, and you know this is the ASIC, ESIC relation, that is ESIC, X modulus, digital modulus, and bulk modulus relationship, that is, and also uh, the other 
now with the within the elastic limit the constants within the elastic limit are n modulus k modulus and the bijonian ratio the the elastic constant and their relationship with the relationship existing between these four constant elastic constant is a easy derivation don't worry about the derivation how it has come no See, in the very good of the higher class, then we will discuss about, you can discuss about and you can understand much more. Now, for our polytechnic level, student level, I think just understand, just know this, that is, this is the relation. E, E multiplied by 2 into shear modulus, multiplied by 1 by 4, e, 1 by 4, one, 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 that is Python's ratio. This is Python's ratio. And this is one simple problem. We are, we are we are highlighted in the previous class. Now again, there is one more one more problem. This also we are going to discuss about this. Now, uh, see for a given material, H modulus, one in ten to the power by Newton per unit square, and modulus of visibility is both by four in ten to the power by. Find the bulk modulus and lateral contraction of the round bar fifty millimeter diameter and two point five meter long when stretched by two point five millimeter. Write down the given data, write the given data, all the data are given, whatever the things we have discussed, all these things are related here. And it is a very simple problem. Now take the relationship existing between the ECK and the few the values, now definitely we can calculate all the data, whatever whatever the uh, data required or the uh, asked in the problem. And uh, again, don't forget the, the linear strain, lateral strain. And change in diameter, everything remains. Uh, whatever the things we have discussed, we have to carry, we have to be with this. It is uh, very essential for strength of materials. And also, there is another one small problem we have discussed about this in the previous class. And the temperature stresses also, we have discussed about this. Now, there, the temperature stresses, now here, um, temperature stresses are developed, developed against. Uh, the restrictions of the change in their length due to increase in temperature. The stresses developed in the material will is the change in that is not allowing when the body is allowed to expand freely, it, it expands by, by alpha T n by alpha T original. Now when that when the when the body is allowed to expand, the body tries to expand. And we are not allowing the body to expand, then the internal resistance developed in the material in the opposite direction to prevent the expansion. You now such forces that is the resistance, that resistance of the temperature force. Now here there are two the nature of the stress is one is compressive, the other one is tensile. When the material is touched or resisting, resisted against the expansion, the stress is induced against the expansion due to raising temperature. Is the temperature is, is the compression and the stresses induced against the decrease in temperature, the stresses induced in the opposite direction, that is the tensile uh, forces. Stresses induced in the material in the opposite direction, those stresses are called the tensile stresses. From these two, the when sometimes Sometimes in our engineering practice, we may need to, we, sometimes we may need to uh, uh, allow the expansion for a millimeter, 0.001 millimeter, depending upon the criteria, the design of the machine, design of the product. Now, sometimes we may need to do it. Now, therefore, uh, we are, sometimes we are allowing the body, allowing the material to expand a small quantity, small amount. Now, there are so, there the are the simple problem. A copper arm, 15 mm diameter, 15 mm diameter, 810 mm, 810 mm long is equal to the degrees and shells. What is the expansion? What is the expansion? And when it is pretty expanded? So, for the expansion is prevented between both its ends, find the stresses, its nature, and the force applied by the grids. Now, therefore, now this is the problem right on the given data, right the given data, and from this data, it is we can calculate the expansion, free expansion it is. The expansion prevented. This is the this is the, this is the expansion. When you increase the temperature by an amount by certain temperature to, to 50 degrees centigrade, the expansion takes place. Find some for The stress is 
first this is multiplied by strain strain multiplied by h modulus now like you know we can calculate the quantity required quantity from the given data with the good principle the force exerted that is when we are restricting the body not to expand then what is the amount of force ex exerted on the supports and we go to the next study that is the new heading of this uh, simple stress and strain strain energy strain energy is another heading uh, heading of this uh, another heading of this stress and strain the energy absorbed by absorbed by the body when strained within the elastic limit is known as the strain energy it is also called resilience 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 we the energy when the force is applied within the elastic limit the amount of energy absorbed by the body is called strain strain energy. and you know the proof resilience resilience so proof resilience the maximum strain energy which can be stored in a body the maximum energy that can be stored in a body when loaded within the elastic limit is known as proof resilience there is a maximum strain energy stored in the material there is a maximum so that is proof resilience then modulus of resilience proof resilience or unit volume is defined as the modulus of resilience modulus of resilience is modulus of resilience strain energy strain energy is stored in the material can be calculated from this see, see the the relation u from you know different people use different uh, uh, designation somebody will use u somebody will use w uh, different depending upon the their uh, you know relevance they use the all these equation so this is u is equal to the s square divided by 2e s square by 2e now s square is the stress in the material Again, the stress induced in the material again the operate force star s square divided by 2e 2e is the h modulus so the whole thing multiplied by the volume per volume unit volume now it is written here e is the h modulus then straight away we can calculate the stress induced or the energy stored now for example they have given one one problem it is given that one problem problem for example calculate the strain energy stored in a bar two meter long 20 mm 15 mm wide and 40 mm thick when it is subjected to a tensile load of 100 kN given that h modulus is 2 into 10 to the power 5 newton per millimeter square of the material then calculate the strain energy read on the given data read the given data length of the body is given as 2000 mm and b is the breadth and b is the thickness of the material but and load of weight is 100 kN area of cross section we the you no know, cross section area cross section of the material metal metal bar is v into t is 50 2000 mm square now i request all our uh, suggest all our students to adapt only one unit throughout the uh, subject uh, throughout the problem either you have to use meter or millimeter or any other units whatever you are uh, for regular practice you go to you, you can you use, use those units now that one now i adapted normally i have adapted here you know millimeter newton millimeter now in the present uh, days now we are using we are accustomed with the si system millimeter newton and millimeter therefore it is better to practice newton and newton millimeter and you know area class is going to calculated as a simple analysis and volume that is area into volume volume is here into volume that is so the area into length of the bar that gives you the that is volume volume now stress as usual load divided by cross section area that is load divided by cross section area and that gives you 50 newtons millimeter square now strain energy you know that f square by 2 e multiplied by volume now just substitution we will get the quantity of the strain energy in newton millimeter newton millimeter strain energy now we will take one more problem for example that is calculate the strain energy that can be stored in a in the material 3 meter long 40 mm in dia subjected to a tensile load of 10000 10000 newtons 10000 kilo newtons now there is some wrong in this let's see uh, there there data given uh, 
uh, length of the bar is given, you know, write down all the data given, and also calculate the uh, cross sectional area of the material, that is 5 into 5 into 5 into 5 into 40 square given data, diameter, by 4, 5 into 5 into 4, we get 1 to 5 millimeters square. And also we can calculate the from the stress, stress is equal to road divided by cross sectional area, road divided by cross sectional area, now apply this and we will get this is the stress induced, it is the stress induced with the material due to this. And volume of volume is equal to area into length, that is, they are all very simple uh, uh, analysis. And uh, the another, uh, another uh, new word is introduced, introduced or new word comes into picture here. Load applied suddenly, what is the meaning of that? Load applied suddenly. When the load applied suddenly, so it means no use. So far, whatever we have discussed, that is gradual application of the load. So far, whatever the things we have discussed in the last classes, no, all these things are till now. That is gradual application of load. Normally, the load is applied in engineering practice from zero, and slowly we are loading. Suppose if you build a an is building, first we will foundation, then slowly we will develop the structure. Then gradually we are applying. The best example is now if you drop a stone piece, if you just place a stone of around 5, 10 kilo Newton stone piece, you know, the impression will be less. Now suppose if you drop it, you no, know, it is a sudden application of load. Then what is going to happen? When you apply the when sudden load applied suddenly, now whereas the stress we so far we are over calculating the load applied. The load application, so far we are discussing about that. That is load application, whatever the, the load of stress calculation. Now we were calculating the stress, stress is equal to load divided by cross section area, we were calculating it. Now, here afterwards, now in this case, particularly, no, no, not here afterwards, in this case, when the load applied suddenly, what is going to happen? What is the energy, amount of energy absorbed in the material? What is going to happen? Now, what is that part happening? Strictly speaking, when the load is applied suddenly, the stress induced will be twice the normal stress. When the load apply, when we are, when the load is applied gradually and we are calculating the stress induced in the material, it is regular load divided by cross sectional area. Now, here afterward, what we are going to do is, now here afterward, the, no, no, in this particular case, the load of, the stress will be calculated twice the normal stress, that is 2 multiplied by load divided by cross sectional area, that we need to calculate it. When the load, when the load applied is suddenly, load applied, suddenly comes into picture. So whenever the load is applied suddenly, an axial pull off, an axial. Okay. Now there is one let us solve one problem, let us understand this. An axial pull off 50,000 newton is suddenly applied to a steel rod, 2 meter long, 100 millimeter square in cross sectional area, cross sectional area, then a cross sectional area. Calculate the strain energy that can be stored when length modulus of the material is greater than the power of newton per Given data, data given. What are the data given? Can I write down the given data? data given. P is equal to load, then write down the length, area, cross sectional area, length modulus. Now, very simple volume, let's call the volume, area into length, that is volume. Then similarly, that is now here we have to concentrate on this. So please make there is a change in this particular event in the first particular the relationship. Now stress is equal to over till now we are discussing only about the P by A because in every, every in every aspect the load is applied gradually. But in particularly in this case, in this case, when the load is applied suddenly, you now that is load applied suddenly, the stress induced in the material is twice the normal stress. So therefore. Now twice that, that is earlier case it was, so in that is now it is 100 to 1000 newton per minute. That is double, the stress will be doubled. Now in the case of, in case of load upright suddenly. Now the strain energy again, calculate the strain energy, now newton per minute square. Now like you know, we can calculate. Now similarly, further, so one more, one more problem, let us solve this. An axial pull of 6,000 newton is suddenly applied, suddenly applied to a steel rod, 4 meter long, 20 mm in diameter, 
Kalyan strain energy is stored when Encke modulus is equal to E to E to 10 to the power of 5 Newton per minute. That's how it is calculated. The data given, the data given is load of point is equal to 6,000 newtons. The length of the bar is 4 meters. Diameter of the bar is 15 millimeters square. Then Encke modulus is right on calculated as load of point. Strain energy absorbed by the material when the load is applied. Suddenly, please underline this. This is the load of weight. Suddenly, area of cross section is given by area of cross section is by d square by 4. That is as usual by d square by 4. Then we will substitute the values and we get the cross sectional area. When you get the cross sectional area, then volume can be calculated from this. The stress, please remember again, the stress, the stress is twice the normal stress. This is the stress, normal stress. This to you, the twice that this is multiplied, this normal stress is multiplied by two. That means the stress used in the material when the load is applied suddenly is P by two. So that is twice. Now therefore two you to calculate the stress in use and calculate the strain energy as usual. So you the values with a very simple equation, the relationship, simple relationship, calculate the stress, calculate the strain energy. But you know. Uh, the plastic, now there are few some properties of the material that is, it is enjoyed in the syllabus uh, and we should do it, not uh, only for the, the in respect of the syllabus, uh, we should do being an engineer. A material is said to be, a material is said to be plastic when the wind does not return to the original shape but retains the deformed shape even after the load causing deformation, deformation is very good. That is elastic property, property elasticity, elasticity which regains, which regains its original shape after removal of the load force. Now plasticity means the body will not come back to its original shape, original position. Now it is called permanent deformation. The permanent deformation is called plasticity of the property. That is, it never comes back when you remove the force. That means it, it, the body enters into the plastic state. That means it is a property of material which enable it to be drawn out into, it, into a much smaller section without rupture it is known as ductility. Ductility means we can we can oh, we can draw, we can run, we can length increase without any rupture. So that is that is, that's the nature, that's the material. The malleability, this is the property of the material which enables it to be hammered into thin sheets without rupture. So we can, uh, see, we, we can hammer it and we can make thin sheets. Now that is the malleability. That is the characteristic of the material. Material character. Then brittleness, brittle, brittleness, a brittle material is one which Fail suddenly without warning, without any warning, for small loads. For example, what is glass? A small force is applied, so it will break. Isn't that brittle material? For small, uh, there is one, uh, a brittle material, one which fails suddenly without any warning, without knowing. Isn't it? There is a sudden break in the material. Now that is brittleness. Hardness, it is the capacity of the material to resist the abrasion, penetration, then scratching, material hardness, scratching. So it is the capacity of the material, capacity of the material for abrasion, for penetration and for scratching. It is, it is the resistance against those things. Now that nature, that is, it is called hardness, hardness of the material. Now material hardness, Generally expressed in terms of Grinnell's hardness number. And creep, it is found that at very high temperature, even if the stress is kept constant, there is a continuous increase in the strain over a period of time. There is an increase in the initial stress. Now, these are the long strains, the strain without increasing the load, without increasing the load, the strain will continue. So that is the uh, creep. No, it is creep. No, all these things happen in bridge girders. No, long span support. Because no extra load will be applied. 
So there is OT, there is a continuous uh, the structure has been designed and for for the cell weight there will be long deformation. There is a deformation even for a longer period three. Therefore, when designing the structure, we need to consider all these things. And you know, now these are the few problems, exercise problems I have given here. You now this is you just I think I suggest all our students to go through the, all these problems. You now there are 40, 50 problems. You know, there are few problems solved in the regular the regular slides, solved problems, and many examples, many problems. That is exercise problems, exercise. Are given here. No, you just go through that whenever you find time. No, when not in find time. No, you just uh, um, maybe you you, you you are you must solve all these problems before going to the examination. No, one among may be appear in your examination. Many many problems. No, these are the problems available in our textbook, question papers, solved solved book. Question papers. No, we have everything, and uh, therefore I request, uh, I suggest the students to go through you now all these these problems, find this, all these, and the, if you find any more more difficulties, you, know, uh, you discuss with your uh, faculty members and with textbooks, which is available solution. Very simple, all are simple problem. You now therefore kindly go through this course. And you know. In the next, uh, uh, in the next, in the next class, in the next, uh, no, in the next chapter, the most important, the one, uh, the uh, another chapter, another moment, it is center of gravity and the moment of inertia. Center of gravity and moment of inertia. Center of gravity and moment, centroid, center of gravity, moment of inertia. Centroid. Centroid. What is centroid? Centroid means what? The center of the plane figure. The mass of the plane figure concentrate coincides and merge at a point. That is centroid. A plane figure, a plane figure, if you think that it coincides in at a point, you know that point is called centroid. The center of gravity is the center center of the figure, the entire mass of that figure acting through which that is centroid, center of gravity. Centroid is the plane figure which coincides, which coincides and merges at a point. Now that point is called centroid. Shrinks at one point, that point is called centroid. And you know the mass of the mass of the figure acting to the center of a point. So that point, you know, is the center of the center of gravity. Now therefore, no, no, we need the center, center, centroid, and center of gravity. Now plays a big role in designing the structures, designing the bridges. Buildings, there are so many things. There are, it is a very relevant topic for our civil engineers to know the shape. That is, there are two things in in now. One is the other, this is the geometrical property. We call this as geometrical property, geometrical property of the material. No. Geometrical property of the material. Geometrical, geometrical property. Geometrical properties of the material. Now, in in this particular topic, now we have to understand it is also if we go to the higher level, it is shape factor. We are, we are using use the word appropriate shape factor. Shape. Shape of the structure. Now, for example, now well, yeah, let us consider a beam. If you consider a beam, so a low resisting RCC beam, the beam will be you normally it will be kept like this. The depth will be more and the width will be less. Now again, depending upon the designer, depending upon the necessity and depending depending upon the load application. 
and their requirement. So normally in the design, in the design, the depth will be kept more and the width will be less. Now if you consider the column, when when the air column, some people will keep the column in, in this direction. Some people will keep the column or the columns in this direction. No, no, that is, that shows that that shows there is some reason to keep the column in that particular direction. So because now this is depending upon the application of the force load, the shape also. No, see already we have discussed about the uh, force forces. No force how the column uh, behaves against the against the force. The car the column size is more. The stress level is less. The load is more. Stress level is more. You know, like you know, the geometrical property of material, of geometrical prop, geometric geometry of the material also plays a very big role in resisting the forces. Now, when you go to the site or a construction site, construction activity or any industry, you can go and see that they they say something you feel. Upward. Now, what, why is they have done it like this? Now, because it is a uh, theoretical relevance. Now, relevance because you have to design the structure in that direction only. You have to keep that. Now, other if you keep the other direction, either stability will be reduced, or you need to more. You need to do the more. Now, either of the two, you have to one you either money you have to compromise, or uh, some you know like you know the. Shape factor, shape of the material, shape of the material plays very big role in resisting the loads, isn't it? Now, therefore, now, um, um, now I will conclude this class. Now, now I will come back. You now, in the next day after tomorrow, and I will discuss. I will discuss more about you now this uh, center of gravity and moment of inertia, and also we will discuss the many more. For problems and I will solve the uh, problems also and I will give a little more uh, theory also in this problem with more uh, references and more figures I will come back. So thank you very much for everybody. Thank you a lot. Now, now today I am concluding this the simple success and strain that that, that chapter we have concluded that is over uh, that is completed as per the our syllabus uh, whatever the theme syllabus, syllabus according to the syllabus uh, so, Student syllabus, and now while this is the second chapter, now I will take up this in the next day after tomorrow. We have class here again. Now for this in this class, I will discuss about center of gravity and moment of inertia with much more. Thank you very much for everybody. Thank you a lot. Finish. <laughs>